so excited to have such a great selection of special guests on this album. The song Feel No Pain features Bill Lawrence from Snarky Puppy on piano and Dame Evelyn Glennie on percussion. An absolute dream to work with them both. Um, I love the, the, the jazz element, the chords that Bill Lawrence has brought to the music, especially in the outro where you know we had this chant kind of feel going, but the chords that he's added is really just taking it to another level. And then finally getting to meet and record and see her studio, uh, Dame Evelyn Glennie really brought us into her home in Cambridgeshire. It's amazing treasure trove of percussion instruments that she took us through um, with pleasure and just seeing her recording process really getting to speak to her and understand more about her I mean the drums was my first instrument so she was the first artist I remember listening to and feeling in awe of so um, to have met a hero and to have had her on the album is a real dream come true. Another special guest that I have on Feel No Pain is my daughter Jemima. Um, I think the interesting thing about this album is it's the first time making an album or writing music with a family or being a mum. And that transition really did have a big effect on my music, the way that I approached uh, the saxophone just for a start, and the way that I approached my solos. I had a more mature feel within me. Um, so it was really important because I had to spend so much time away from her, both touring and in the studio. So the days that she came to the studio, she got on the mic and sang Hill and Gully Rider like there was no tomorrow. And um, yeah, it's a great sort of snapshot to have. During the process of writing uh, with Rick, we were trying to really encapsulate what war would sound like. Um, the idea of, you know, that beat, that the marching, the, the, the pace, the military feel. Um, and I think with reggae, that's already there, you know, that, that warrior charge always. Um, so we really wanted to head in that direction. But then also, in terms of bringing in the jazz and soul, it really needed to be edgy. It needed to sort of push boundaries in terms of the sound of the sax um, and also push through in terms of what you think you might hear and hearing a bit of a battle um, in the song. And so there was one person that immediately came to mind um, of how to create that battle almost and that was Casey Benjamin. Casey Benjamin plays the sax, is well known for his work with the vocoder um, and playing the sax in Robert Glasper's uh, band. So. We'd been in contact, the way that social networking allows you to, um, and he was my first port of call and you know, sent him the track and he really understood what I was trying to get at. And you'll hear, you know, the alto sax and the tenor sax, the morph of the, the way the sound changes of the saxophone, what you're used to hearing and how that electronic sound kind of seeps in. And I think we kind of really got that pace, that feel and the edginess of war. The working title was actually War. But the, on the album, the song name is Dream Dream Repeat, simply because, you know, it's something that we've experienced and yet it keeps coming up. The same news keeps coming up, the same feelings are coming up again. In the world of war, when they don't know what they're fighting for, forgive them the evil they do. I think the hardest task as an instrumentalist is trying to find the right words, the right voice, the right person that brings together the sentiment that you have for the album. And I'm so glad to have found that in Raheem Devon. Sending him the, the music that Rick and I wrote for Prosper and him coming back with the, the perfect feeling of forever getting trials and tribulations coming at your way and never wanting that to succeed, never to let it hinder you. We're reading about it in politics with the refugee crisis and I think it came together perfectly, really, really summed it all up. Um, and I just love that track, Prosper. And also having him lend his vocals to the lyrics of This Kind of Love, hearing that soul. When I talk about mixing reggae, jazz and soul, you really feel the backing vocals, the soul element, um, and a nice, fantastic love song. As much as the music and the feel of this album is new, it was really great to have some old friends 
come and join me on the album in Phoebe Edwards when we did the launch of the last album. Uh, she came to sing on the opening night and uh, just the pipes, <laughs> if I can put it that way. The lady can sing the rafters off any studio and um, it was wonderful just to be in her session and really see her bring um, No More War to life. You know, she really sang that with a passion that only you feel in gospel, really. Every day I pick up the mantle of this love, approach with smile, salute. And then to have Floasis join me from the duo Floetry, a group that I grew up with their music, with the soundtrack to my growing up. It was amazing to have her put the words into lyrics, you know, just narrating, if you like, the end of that album um, was a dream come true for me. On Neutral Ground, I was joined by John Cleary, who's now based in New Orleans, originally from the UK. And to be in New Orleans for a gig and to be able to see his space and see his piano set up was, was great. Also learning about the Neutral Ground in New Orleans, a place where racial tensions didn't exist, where people could just go and really just spend time without any fear of violence. Um, really spoke to me in terms of what this album was about. Having a safe haven, a safe place is so really very important. And then, also for this track, we were joined by Kieran Harold, who's worked with everybody from Maxwell to Jay-Z. I remember hearing that Maxwell album, hearing the horns and thinking, where is the source of this? And finally getting to meet him, he was in London for all of a couple of hours came to the studio and just laid down his part within the hour. It was fantastic seeing the process um, and really I'm chuffed to have him on the album. Love Politics War really carries a message, a message of hope, a message of togetherness, a message of a better tomorrow. And for me, it was a way of processing all of the news that keeps flooding you know, into my life and our lives and really trying to find positivity. I hope it does the same for you.